modern Britain in 2012. In the midst of a recession, we are all in it together, but some are in it deeper than others. It's a tricky time to be coming of age on a council estate. This film follows three lads over a summer of trying to make their way in an austere world. Without money, it's a struggle to keep a roof over your head, find a job, and aspire to a future. One thing's happened after another since we lost a job, so lost a job, lost a house. Piece of shit. My mum does want me, but she just can't afford to support me anymore, so I thought I'd really do my own thing. I'm a teenager and I'm a bit stuck at times. Times get hard, things get on top of me. If I don't act up and stop acting like a kid, how am I going to bring up a kid? So now I'm here trying to be a man. <laughs> I haven't always been a determined, focused person, like so. You know, it's, it's, it's got me into trouble in the past and I have to change, I have to do something about this. My aim is to not just to educate myself, it's to actually one day be working in a successful industry. Eighteen-year-old Craig has grown up on an estate on the outskirts of town. Most people on here comes into drugs when they're young, and they have a lot. Most people fight when they're younger, and it's just, it's just that like kids grow up around it. It's just a thing. Chaff, can't no housing and violent. <laughs> I just don't want to be like the rest of them. I want to have a job and that, have a good life. Craig still lives at home, supported by his mum. This is my house. Yeah, this is my room, it's a bit of a mess. Not very big, but this is where me and my mates hang out, if it's cold on the street. Well, I used to have a other door, and it fell off. But I don't like not having a door to my room. Were you doing a bit of boxing training on the wall there? Oh, I just punched it one thing. <laughs> I was got mad with something and punched it. In an industrial town like Rotherham, jobs are scarce. For Craig's mum, it's a particularly hard time. She recently lost her job and is pregnant. She owns the house. It's not, it's not actually a council house. She bought it 12 years on. I'm still there. Without a job, it's increasingly hard to make the mortgage payments and Craig's mum is now being forced to sell his childhood home. She had a job since she was 16, but now for the first time in like 18 years she's been put out of work. She's having to sell the house here some money so she can move. Craig! Craig, start organising what's happening! My mum's struggling for money at the minute because yeah. she's been out of work. Can't live here anymore. For Craig, it's not just leaving this house, it will mean leaving home and fending for himself for the first time. In Birmingham, 19-year-old Wes is also struggling with his home life. Although he does sometimes stay at his mum's, life is difficult there. Me and my mum have good and bad days. We can be all right for one minute, and the next minute we can be completely different. I just want to get my own place, innit? Because there's no space in my house anymore. It's just overcrowding, there's no income coming in. So I've shared a room with a refer, um, 19 years. In this cramped room. Wes has decided his only option is to try and get a place in a young person's hostel. I just want to do things for myself now. I've done college, school, 
and I'm ain't got a job. So getting a hostel is the first step of me really doing anything. Come on, man. I've been suffering with my cousins for a couple of days. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm just sick of being stuck in other people's houses and not having a place on my own. It's one step of being a child, isn't it? Going into the adulthood, getting my own place. Although it may gain him independence, getting his own room will come at a cost, financially and to his job prospects. The 19-year-old Frankie home is a cramped three-bedroom council flat where five people are dependent on his mum's benefits. It's a lively day. Two of my sisters sleep in this room here, one of my sisters sleep in that room there, and my mum sleeps in that room there. And obviously this is my room there. Where's the front room? There's not a front room. <laughs> yeah. That's that sister. Um, my two younger sisters sleep in this room here. When someone's in the shower, obviously if I'm in the rush, I just bang on the door, tell them to come up. It's a lot living with four women. It's alright, I, I don't know. I've always, because obviously it's the norm to me, so I don't really know what it's like to not live with just women. Yeah, I was always in the streets like, growing up anyway, I was never really at home, so. I was always around males anyway, so this is just where I slept when I was growing up, I guess. Frankie has just finished his first year at college, where he's studying games design. Um, people who create the software, um, they provide it to students for free, so I don't have to actually pay for the software. This project is just um, Dream Home. That'll be on the beach with a swimming pool and a roof, you know. It's just, it's a dream home, it's a dream, like, it's a fantasy, it's not real. Frankie, your uh, try seats are in the tumble dryer. Right. See you later, girls. See you later, Frankie. Bye. This ain't my dream home. Because if I create a dream home that's just appealing to me, it would probably be in the woods or uh, somewhere secluded like that. My dream is always just being independent, having my own house, being happy somewhere. And location-wise, it would probably still be in the hood, like... There's nothing actually wrong with the area. It's just the environment, you know, Mentally, I can't be here. I have to kind of break myself away from that and get out of that bubble. Frankie's hope is to be the very first person from his family to get to university. Because obviously living around here my whole life, I've seen people grow up, but they haven't really moved on anywhere. I've just seen them grow up and be in the same place. One day I kind of said to myself, like, I have to change, you know, if like, nobody ain't going to change for me. I do need that determination, you know, and that focus, because without that, then you know, how am I going to get where I want to be? But with fees now hitting nine grand a year and no access to the bank of mum and dad, the odds are stacked against him. Education is the way out, you know. Rich people don't need to really care about education because it's given to them on a plate. Whereas people like me or whoever else is in my state, you're born into nothing, so you have to make something of yourself. In Rotherham, a town dominated by steelworks, Craig had trained as a welder. I'm not a trained mechanic, I'm an engineer and welder. Well, I know basic car mechanics, but he knows more about bikes. But these days, there's not much call for welders. Being taught me like quite heavy machinery and that, but there's just no jobs out there what, for young people. No one wants to take young kids on from school. Despite their skills, Craig and his old schoolmate Chink have never had jobs. Although Chink still has his paper round. The lads scratch a bit of money by fixing bikes. 
Yeah. And yeah, there's loads of people who've got bike parts, what they'll swap or trade for another bike part, engines or brakes or whatever, clutch. I only got this because I swapped the scooter for it. There's three mechanics on the street, and one welder on the street that are out of work. So that's an empty job trade, so they can help me in life. If I ever need any welding done, I'd have to do it myself. Although he has no future in the industry he trained for, Craig has refused to sign on and claim benefits. Instead, he enrolled in a local sports course, which gets him £10 a week and a free bus pass. But £10 won't support him when he has to stand on his own two feet. Wes didn't manage to get a place in the hostel and he's back on his old circuit. We're in frequent places all the time, always travelling, always going round and round. But there is one constant in his life. A year ago, Wes became a dad. Bro. It's on now. Yeah. Look. Oh, I don't do that. When I found out, I was 17. I was in my college class and I was just sitting, just sitting there and she's pinged me on my Blackberry and she said, guess what, are you going to be a dad? It was a good feeling, but a scary feeling thinking, OK, I've got to step up now, I've got to be a dad, I've got to grow up. Not knowing who my real dad is. He left my mum when she fell pregnant, so I thought, I can't do that to anyone. I need to be there for him, you know what I'm saying? When he's here with Rowan, he's good. I'm not going to fault him on that. But he does do the proper dad job, but he's, he's still a young boy inside, so... I don't know, I didn't expect it to be as hard as it is. <coughs> Go on. It's their child as well. They help make it, so they should pay the way as well. Cos it's not easy. You know, a tin of milk, look, even of £12 now, that don't get you nowhere, so... But on £53 a week job seekers allowance, it's a struggle to contribute. Financially, um, yeah, it was hard. Cos there's stuff that you just can't do all the time. The main arguments are about he's not ah. supporting us and whatever ah. else. You know, I'm struggling. Money wise, because I have to buy everything for Rowan. Um, but it's not that easy. I've been doing a bit of voluntary work, but I don't know. I don't want to be doing voluntary work. Who wants to work for free? If he got a job, it'd be so much easier. Craig, events at home are moving faster than he'd expected. Unable to sell the house and going further under with the mortgage, Craig's mum is moving out. Desperate to sell, she's planning to have it redecorated. No boxes <laughs> Reluctant to leave the place he grew up and with his relationship with his mum strained, Craig is staying on. Temporarily. Right, we're done. Between them. Is there anything left mine? Apart from Tully and pictures. When are you taking Tully? In about five minutes, I'm taking it in this car. We have some what? money? What? I ain't got any. Right. Thanks a lot, Jack. So I'll, I'll phone you in a couple of days when I get my thing organised. Thanks for all your help. With nothing left in the house, Craig looks at retrieving sofas his mum had lent a neighbour. Well, for fuck's sake. For fuck's sake, everything was fucking ruined. I tell the stupid bitch. Fucking bitch. I said to my mum two weeks ago. Keep them settees. I remember when I was young, when I first ever come here. 
and I'm a four year old, I remember this is the last time I seen this room empty. Everything I know is around here, but now I'm on my own, so it's not going to be as easy. Wes isn't the only teen dad on the estate. Almost all his mates are dads and out of work. Yeah, man. His close mate Aaron has asked him to come round. With no money and a hungry baby, he's desperate. Can we have to put ten pounds in it? Has to be ten. Yeah, good. That's but I'm thing. saying, now, nah, but I'm saying, if you put in five, you can still use the emergency again. But then that, that that's going to be gone by tomorrow. You know what I mean? You know what you need to do, Aaron. Mm. Ask someone to lend you some money, simple as. Simple. I went to my dad for yesterday to borrow money, in it. Can't do that now. Oh, you've been sick. Oh, bless. Yeah. What happened? Uh, I can't go to no family member, and there's not many people out there that'll borrow me things. My dad's just a waste, man. Just know if you come back here tomorrow, though, this show's got to have electric food and he's going to have some nappies. <laughs> yeah. Some milk. Ooh. What milk does he take? Um, for hungry babies, I think. SMA? Nah. The other one, Callum Gate. Callum Gate? Mm. Hungry baby one? Mm. So what, if I got him some SMA ones? Not good. Not good, he fought with his stomach. Yeah. They both know what the options for making money on an estate can involve. If I've got a bit of change in my pocket, I can go out there, grab a little set and go flip it and make a little bit of money in it. Well, no, you don't even want to be getting yourself sucked in all this stupidness. Yeah, I know, but it's just you sick. can ask me to borrow money, but it's not like I need to borrow like a little bit, you know, you need, you need stuff, but. Can you use your phone with him? Yeah, but. Hi, this is Jam Center. Plus, please put us one. Oh, I hate this automated system. Wes has decided to try and lend Aaron the money himself, but his job seeker's allowance payment hasn't come through. Mm -hmm. And the job centre aren't much help. OK, then. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. She said, get a crisis loan for now. She said, it ain't been processed. And then the last time they offered me a crisis loan, 14 pounds, but take the piss, but that's, oh, I'm not even gonna get mad about it, because <sighs> now I'll just have to see what else I can do, so. For now, he's as skint as Aaron. JSA money, 59 pound a week. I don't know how they expect adults people that have kids to live off £59 a week. The streets is a safety net. The streets is always there for you. There's always opportunity within the streets to, you know, make money. But it's easy. It's like the easy route out. Whereas going to get a job and that, that's kind of the hard route and you need that determination and ambition to get you there. And if you're coming from the state like this and you go apply for a job, they get knocked back down then, so they kind of lose that determination after they try, so then they come back to the streets and the streets provide, so that's why you can't blame people for coming back to the streets. But Frankie knows from experience what the price of the streets can be. Every few weeks, he makes a two hour journey across London and gets a stark reminder. When I visit my friends, I know what they're thinking. That's why it's good to be the person yeah. on the other side of the table, because I know what goes through their head. Before, when I was here, I was, I was sitting on the other side of the visiting table. I was the person being visited. Frankie was sentenced to two years in prison for the street robbery of a mobile phone that ended in violence. I hit one of the boys and he suffered a fractured jaw, so... 
that's why I come to prison, so, yeah. You can say I've done two years for, you know, seriously injuring it. However you look at it, you know, I was in prison for something, you know, I wasn't in prison for no reason, no one's in prison for no reason. Though. No bed, toilet, sink. Amazing view. I was thinking about it just now when I was in there. What did I do to kill time? Like, you know, I used to just think all the time. That's when I kind of come up with a plan, you know, kind of try to structure my life. I've woken up and realised what, you know, what, what my life is like and, you know, what everyone else's life is like. And, I kind of had to think, you know, how can I better this? And no, I don't regret it because, you know, it allowed me to come to prison. You know, it gave me, you know, it gave me that time to think, you know, what I want to do with my life, you know. Always keep that negative safety net, if that makes sense. Like, say, for example, you think, when I get out there, you know, if this don't work, maybe I can go sell drugs or something, you know. So I kind of had to take that negative aspect of my life away. So my safety net is my plan, you know, so I can't let it fail. In Rotherham, Craig has been on his own for a week. With no money to feed himself, his only option has been to swallow his pride and seek benefits, something he's bitterly opposed to. He's just come back from the job centre. This is against everything, against what I wanted to do, but I've got no choice. I never wanted to do right go on the job seekers. I never wanted to, I didn't want to move out yet. But it's all come right quick, so I've just got him. I don't want to do it. My dad does it, and he's a bum. I don't want to be like him. Army's the easiest job these days. If you can get in, you're all right. They'll look after me for the next 10 years. Craig has toyed with the idea of joining the army since school. Right. Mr. Machine gun, so it's all over this bit. Yeah, they filled all that in. That would have been like a place for snipers or something to hide. This is all a pit, a massive mining pit. That like, because they were mining not coal and that they tried invading this all the time. Just oh. shut the steel mills down. Yeah. And then they have about 20 soldiers there waiting to just go boom, 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 boom. I mean, you're a kid with machine gun noises. <laughs> well, that's what you'd be doing, aren't you, wouldn't it? If yeah. you're a sniper. Not a sniper, it's a marksman. Well, a marksman, then, either way. Try it, well. If you don't want your you can do. You can do your marksman training in arm anyway. Yeah. Well, go for it. Try it. I will. Try it. Joining up's a well-trodden path out of the estate. One already taken by Chink's older brother. Your brother loves it, though, doesn't he? He likes being in the army, but he don't want to go back to Afghanistan because he's seen bad things there. As soon as he got his first paycheck, though, he was loving it. For Craig, it's still a schoolboy dream, but he may soon be forced to make a decision. It's worth it, don't it? Not really. If you, if you do what it, if you do what they did, it's not very nice. Thank it's easy in the patrol. It's like um, Afghanistan, um, walking around with a gun. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, In North London, Frankie's college is about to break up for the summer and he's already planning on how to fund himself through the holidays. Well, obviously, once I finish my course, getting a job will be vital. Like, I will have to get a job. I've got work experience with BT, conservation work, um, horticultural work experience. All of them are voluntary. Frankie has built up a great CV through working for free, but getting a paid job is trickier. He has to disclose his criminal conviction. Applying online for jobs ain't really working, so I'm gonna kind of get proactive and go down to Wood Green, go to the stores directly, go to the local internet cafe and just print off devs. I'm just taking the history of the previous person I was using this computer, and whoever was using it was looking for adult work. She was editing her profile. Mandy Mandy, she's 22, and she's a bi curious female escort. And she's from Finchley. I'm 
looking for a retail job um, in the area of games because I kind of I know a lot about the product, so anything to do with games really, I want to work there. You know, ideally McDonald's ain't where I'd apply. McDonald's is like almost last resort. Can I hand in my CV here? You can leave it. Thank you very much. That's a family-run business, so the only people that would employ is family members or friends. Can I speak to the manager, please? Yeah, you speak to her. Um, would it be possible to apply for a, seat, um, a job here, please? Yes, you want to give me a CV, and I can give you our email address for our HR. We forward it to them. It's easier. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Uh, you too. Ironically, cash converters may hold the most promise of a job. Surviving on his own, Craig has been dealing with more basic problems. He's still waiting for his first benefits to come through. I ran out of food on the day. I have nothing yesterday, or the day before, or the day before that, or the day before that. Nothing? 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 <laughs> nothing in there. Sometimes Chink's mum cooks me a bit of food, sometimes I go to my nans. My mates have been looking after me. I've got no money, so I've had to claim job seekers. So, because I'm claiming job seekers, I might, have to, I might have to get kicked out of my college course. So, leave education. How's your mum getting on with selling the house? Yeah, she's selling it in a couple of weeks, and then that's what I've got to go like. I've got two weeks left. That's two weeks to find a place to live and decide his future. Birmingham has one of the highest levels of long-term youth unemployment in the country. Go faster! Go faster! Go, man! Go, man! Before I ride out, I'm just my mum and say I've got a goal now. Watch out, my head's spinning like a strip's pole. Call me John Terry, cos I rarely ever meet my goals because of that, my belly starts to ache like a beat and loads of know what it's like. As the summer wears on, Wes has fallen into a routine. Being a dad in the mornings and then drifting down to the corner with his mates in the afternoon. I've got love for tons of chicks growing up in the area with roads and never sleep. Everybody scrapes a pee, trust me, nothing's ever free. Everybody has a dream, but a very few will see how it feels to be able to make it reality. And I hope that's me, and I'm never gonna sleep until I know. I'd say the community is everyone's like no jobs. Day to day, you see the same faces, so you just know they ain't got jobs. Do what every nigga does unless you mean get lean. It's council estate. You don't get twisted, chilling with the man, them. The hood life as it's good times. Mm -hmm. I've got friends that have jobs, but not necessarily my closest friends ain't got jobs. When you gonna drop them animal? Hard. Hustle, 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 hard. It's hard to focus being around them. Because they ain't focused. Stretch my piece of elastic. That's why I'm moving drastic. I don't remember the rest, you know, but I swear to God, but no, I'm a blackberry man. <laughs> It's just stupid, isn't it? It's like a circle. A circle where you're just stuck. You got after? See, this place is way fire than it did yesterday, though, but... Yeah. Yeah, but... I'm red. I'm red as well, though. I'm more red than you. I don't care, but I'm red. Craig's mates have been rallying round. Chink has been buying him food with his paper round money 
and waking him up for his course. You're not going to be happy, are you? <laughs> You're crazy, dude. But this is the very last time. Craig's two weeks are up. Make sure you get up. His mum has got together enough money for the redecorating and she needs the house clear. Craig! Um, I've got plaster coming. I want to arrange a bulb. I want to come and see this room with him. I want him to pack some stuff up. She didn't fucking tell me how to move all my stuff out on Friday. She said you just gotta fucking be sort well, be ready for Friday, so now I've got to fucking go fuck about. I'm not doing it. His mum has found him a room he might be able to rent so he's not homeless. But he'll have to claim housing benefit to pay for it. Craig! Come on! Why can't you do it today? I just don't want to. 12.20 in the bus station at the cash machines. Make sure you're there. I'm not mm -hmm. messing this man about. It sounds perfect, this room, for you. So you can't let me down. I won't let you down. Because I don't want an house full of Romanians and it's, I've got to rent rooms out because I'm broke. This house has got to go whatever. Yeah, I know it does. My fucking home, though, innit? Right. It's not going to join it on, anyway. Right, well, I just want you to deal with it. Well, I will fucking deal with it. What are you going in as? Same as what I was doing last time. Infantry. Yeah. I don't want to go in there. Well, I'm fucking 18 year old, and if I want to go and shoot a fucking Taliban, I'll fucking go and do it. I don't care. Alright, shut up. It's gonna be no fucking fault. I'm in this fucking mess. Have some money for some fags. No, I've got no money. So I am. Alright, no, I ain't got three quid. You owe me 140. What? I ain't got three quid. Just washed all then. I got a quid. You're not going to do it like me down, are you? No. Um, I can't trust you to do what you say you're going to do, because you never do. Oh, God. This is not going to go up. I'll never sleep again if he goes in I'm waiting for the dreaded phone call. But, good to get him killed all the time, aren't I? And then in infantry, cannon fodder. How is it? Do you remember the strings of the ice cream? Frankie's CV didn't get him any offers, but he may have another chance. Out of the blue, a voluntary work contact has recommended him for an interview in the West End. Where is the job at the field? Charing Cross. Where? Charing Cross, like central London. How long does it take you to get there? Uh, I don't know. Like 40 minutes. Cancel coat cost 90p around there. I don't go in central London because, you know, there's, there's never really been reason for me to go there, you know. I know Trafalgar Square and that's it. It's not exactly a poor city, you know. There's loads of businesses and that, so it's not like I'm in the middle of nowhere. As much as there is going on, there's a lot of competition, you know. The odds are stacked against you, really. Frankie has never been to a nightclub before and doesn't know the area. But you might have some of the right skills. It's street work, handing out flyers. She kind of said, have you been to a club before? And I was like, no. Like, like, you know, she kind of thought, wow, 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 wow. How are you going to work? How are you going to work in a kind of nightclub environment if you ain't been to a club before? She never said that, but maybe that's what I think she thought, so. It's really important for me to um, get to that interview stage when it comes to getting a job because, because I have a criminal record, so. So when you do apply online, like if, let's say for example, when you apply online, as soon as you enter, you have a criminal record, your application like kind of automatically gets turned down. I almost feel like I'm blacklisted. Like I feel like I can't get jobs because of what I've done when, I'm, when I was a kid. Like, you know, obviously I regret it, every day I regret it, but 
There's nothing I can do. I can't turn back time. Craig has finally accepted he has to move. He's come to clear his stuff out. This is your old room. Yeah, this is my, my old room. Uh, it looks boring and empty. It looks small. You've got walls. I remember them being green. And I remember them being blue before that. Yep, yeah, it's gone. But it can only get better. I hope anyway. Loads here, Jim. Don't pack, just whack. One thing's happened after another since Mum lost her job. Lost her house. Could be dudes parked at recession, but every day it's not just happening to me or my mum, it's happening to everybody in the country. I am bothered about it, but I just don't show show that I'm bothered. So I just keep it all inside and I just think like when I'm laid at bed at night, I'll think of my problems then. So We'll see what it's all about. The last few years, there's been about three or four lads out there who've gone in the army. They give a place to live, they feed you, they give you all the stuff you need, you get a lot of money out of it. Craig hasn't sorted anywhere to stay, so he's using Chink's shed as a base to stash his gear, and he's going to crash on mate's floors. For Wes, one of the problems of being a teen dad is that his £53 a week JSA makes no allowance for his son. As the mum, the extra benefits go to Laura. Today she's going to the market with her mate Sophie. With my benefits, my money's every fortnight, so I have a good week and have a shit week. Thank you. Are you 60p? Those are 60p. When you're on benefits and you're, you're a young parent, it's absolutely rubbish. You can't do what you want. You can't buy what you want. I spend my other shopping in Asda with my milk tokens, which I get, I get £3.10 on each milk token. And then down here, I get my fruit and veg. I just got, I just got three mixed bowls of veg for £2. Young girls think, yeah, I'm going to have a baby, I'll get this money, I don't have to work and whatever. It's not like that, it's way harder. Wes often hangs out at his mate Anton's. That's me done for the week now. Please, I've fed you. Are you? Yeah, I'm <laughs> Next door, Anton's neighbour usually cooks for more than just her four children and looks out for many of the local kids. At the moment, how things are going, there's not a lot of jobs going. So even if they could do something, it's limited really. So by the time he gets to about 18, 19, what is it gonna be like? Is it just gonna get worse in the future? The last chance to take a few. Mm. Nah, I'm doing some more, that's what place is. Oh yeah. yeah. Get light. I mean, I, I think the boys around <laughs> us need to grow up and they need to understand that becoming a father isn't just being the sperm donor or being the guy that comes around every weekend and spends a few hours with its child. Treat him to an idol. 
<laughs> he don't deserve it. He does love it. He don't. He's a nice bloke, I know him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm all right. I'm saying if you're there for your son, you see him a lot. You ain't got to worry about financial stuff until you can afford it. That's how I see it. As long as you dare, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't take a baby to grow up, does it? Which we've learnt that. But I think with boys, it takes longer to mature, doesn't it? I mean, basically, if you used to walk down their road right about now, you'd probably find them all sitting on the wall, doing what? Smoking. Yeah. Playing football with the little kids. Yeah. Bantering with the little kids, you know, <laughs> singing to each other. They've been modicoded, haven't they? They've not had to go out and fend for themselves. I don't think they understand how good it feels and to achieve something, and that's what they need to feel. That's that's the good thing about Wes. He's, he he does more than what the other lads do, you know. Wes has gone out and done courses, and it's a slow process, but he's trying, isn't he? He's trying to go out there and do things. In London, Frankie is waiting for a call. Who's lady for job? This is Emma. <clears throat> Hello? Oh, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm sorry, but just need to get back to you. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, don't worry about it. Okay, so, um, at the end of the seven weeks, there's a post number eight. Okay, well done. All right, then, thank you. All right, bye. Yeah, I got a job, I told you, man. Beat 16 people to the job. Can we go Nando's to celebrate? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> It's been weeks since Craig moved out. Although his JSA is now coming through, he's still sulfur for surfing at mates on the estate. These bring back my funny memories. We damaged him. The only reminder of his old home life are the clips of him, Jake, and Chink messing around in his old room. No, that's what it reminds me of shooting you. All right, yeah. And he's snorting that chili powder. <laughs> a vindaloo chilli powder. <laughs> he said he couldn't breathe through his nose for like three days. <laughs> that was very good. That was very good. I'll be fucking ice cold, you idiot. But Craig's mates know all is not well. <laughs> We're moving and everything because he's not really got much to do and he's basically he's just building up and building up and getting more angrier. And I can see it every day when he's just sat there, he's not not doing all. He's just sat there getting angrier and angrier. And I can see it. I can see it literally building up to the point where he's just going to rather go down a path where he's not going to like, or he's going to do something with his life because he's because of him being angry. The summer's drawing to a close. He's still talking about the army, but hasn't done anything yet. Well, that's most of the reason why he wants to go in on because he's got like nowhere to. Well, he has got places to go, but but it probably does look at it as a way out, like how I ended it first. Mm. Thank you. Well, I I want to get a job in that first, get a car and that, live some of my life. You never know, you could spend like three week in war and get killed, so. I'd rather have some life before going into combat. Frankie, though, is thinking ahead. He's travelled down from London to the south coast. It's really quiet around here. It's very different here. It's full of crackheads, and crackheads, old people and posh people. I like surfer people. He's come down for an open day to check out a degree course in games design. Right, hi, I'm Peter Comnenas. Yeah, I'm uh, one of the professors here at the National Centre for Computer Animation. Welcome. 
So all these guys already have their degrees and they're doing a master's here. And uh, all the courses we do are both academically challenging, so they're, they're difficult courses, yeah. but at the same time they prepare you for work. Oh, animators are crazy. Uh, they do all sorts of weird things like they uh, dance with hula hoops, they do monocycles, they uh, juggle a lot, they even play with a Christmas tree. <laughs> well, what's the possibility of um, me earning money or part-time work while I'm here? Um, it's probably going to be difficult because unlike other colleges, we have a very full um, timetable. If you, if you want to work in a shop or a supermarket, you can, but you'll be exhausted. Oh, he wow. expects you to put in 44 hours a year. Yeah, I mean, that's more than a full-time job. Yeah, I know, that's why he said, that's why he said the possibility, like, you know, is, you know, it'd be too much pressure on you to have a part-time job as well, so yeah. you literally well, just... Well, that's why in my talk I'm saying, you know, lots of people do about to do. Yeah. It's first of all, give you a bit of an insight into student finance. Um, how much could you supplement your income through student finance and support so with actually keep those running job. and who's going to pick up the cost is it mum and dad um, or is it going to be okay. you so there is no need to panic the yes well. the cost that you may pay may be more than people on the current system you can have but in reality, a tuition fee of in this case nine thousand pounds a year you'll pay that annually but there is a tuition fee loan from student finance england to cover that full amount and think a bit about it like an investment you wouldn't so that's your tuition fees enough. okay there that you're paid for you see how it balances so where the loan goes up, the grant goes down, and, and then below the a certain level, not meant to disadvantage there is you, no and the grant. finance system isn't. isn't. The amount that you're paying is more, and I'm not going to deny that. That is the reality of the situation. You will have more of a loan than I have. So what we're going to do now is move on to your budgeting challenge, OK? It will be a three-year course, so that will that, be 27 grand. That'll yeah, be in no, debt. No, you need to write that down because you're going what? to do uh, 27, but that, that's not even including living finance or nothing like that. That's just 27 grand to just to do my course. So obviously there'll be other costs on top of that as well. So it'll be a lot of money. I'm going to live in a flat here yeah, with like, certain rich people and then I'll live off them. That's, that's, how, that's how I'm going to do it. That's my plan. I'll live with rich people, would it? I'll be a cool friend, like, because most of these people that come to this university are kind of like nerds and geeks and stuff, so to have me as their friend, you know, just what they have to do is feed me. That'll be their friend. You've got to have your compulsory uni hoodie, that's part oh, of well, being you have uni. to wear them. You don't have to wear oh. them. No, you wear your own clothes, but if you want to, you can get all your merchandise. Everyone has to have a uni hoodie. Yeah, no, I wouldn't wear that. You wouldn't? No. Never. Never, never. <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll be surprised. When you roll out at five to nine in the morning for your first lecture. Don't feel to mingle. Are they not your kind of people? Um, no. Not at all. Why not? They're weirdos, isn't it? They're all like country people. If you listen to what they're talking about, they're talking, they're talking posh. Oh, my Mercedes broke down, you know, and stuff like that. Like. She's 16 and she's got Mercedes, like, things like that. The day has given Frankie plenty to think about. I need some rocks. <laughs> no, rock stick. They're sweet. You know, it was a good eye opener. But all it, all it highlighted really is how expensive it's going to be. Like, they don't say, oh, it's going to be cheap or tall. That, that, it's like the only thing they tell you is it's going to be so expensive. And it's like, it's like the only thing you highlight is everything's going to cost. It's like it's more and more. It's just the more they go on, the more, the more it's like the more in debt you're going to get. But university ain't really an option. It's a vital. Like I have to do it. So. So we're going to be doing the kick up competition. <laughs> we'll also do see if anyone can beat Wesley. Okay. Winners of the kick-up competition will do a head-to-head -head with Wesley. Two laps, everyone do two laps. For Wes, the summer has finally got a purpose. He has landed his dream job. It may only be for three weeks, but it's paid work. I signed off jobs in there, so no more debt. What one are you doing? Get paid, and then hopefully you go out and find a permanent job. Obtain to a teacher. 
That's how I feel. I feel like a teacher. I don't know, you know, I ain't really had time to speak to them. Probably just in bed. Smoking bud. Stuff like that. When I was sitting at my house, I ain't had a drug board out my face. I just felt like smoking a spiff board. Now that I'm actually doing something, I don't want to smoke. I'm doing something that I enjoy. And I'm getting paid for it. What is it? Six pounds certain an hour, which is all right for kicking around the football, teaching kids, isn't it? There's a new start here. Hopefully, I'd say so. Actually, I can't say hopefully. There's no going back now. Take it, take it. Salsa, <laughs> awesome, guys. Frankie has also settled into his job and he's enjoying the bright lights of the West End. Salsa, bro. So, where's the salsa? Salsa, bro, is just that round there. Okay, no thanks. Oh, you're welcome, man. I mean, I've got a temporary contract. You kind of like look past all that prison thing and stuff like that. For every one flyer that a customer brings back, they get 25p commission. I did too. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. At the moment, you know, I seem to be ahead of everyone else, so, you know, that's a really good look for me because it shows that obviously I'm working hard. Salsa. You know, considering that, you know, they printed off what? Um, 25,000 flyers, you know, 25,000, 25 piece. If, if everyone comes in, the potential to earn on commission is a lot. But obviously, the likelihood is I'm not going to earn that. Yeah, well, in central London, I would have to get in about. Know, like 10 customers to buy a can of coke, guys. So about 2 pounds 50. So you know, it's not, it's not. The commission's not good. In Rotherham, things are also moving. Craig's on his way to an interview. I uh, took loads of CVs out, but this, this, this bit wouldn't be where I was working, it would have been that side. Because it says they're heavy forged, this is where they melt down all the steel to make it. They're electric like, labs where they test the metals. Hey, I've just come to see an Army Careers advisor, mate. After months of putting it off, he's finally decided to enlist. Hi right, lads, how are you doing today? Great, Paul. All right, pleased to meet you. Right, I'm Sergeant Charlton. Hey, All right, hey, you both like to take a seat? It's a lot colder in here. Yeah. The weather's horrific, isn't it? Uh, Do you know anyone then that's in the army? Yeah, um, man and his mates, yeah. brothers and all. Well, you got a couple of mates in there already. Yeah. Yeah. You've already talked want to them about yeah, it. Yeah. And has that like influenced you to join up? Yeah. There? Well, I've always wanted to do it, but he yeah. did it before me. But. Have you actually thought about what you'd like to do within the army? I want to go into rifles. So you want a full-time job, 365 days a year? Yeah. No dramas with that, mate. Yeah, we're, we're not sharpest at tools. <laughs> no. It's not easy to get in the army nowadays. All right. Current climate. To do things like that in Afghanistan, you deploy in operations. You've got to be very physically fit. Okay. So I've been thinking about joining army for a long time. And then I just got kind of put off by it for a while. It's a proud day, have a photo top, get you both to the allegiance and everything, and you swear to the Queen. Everybody knows the risks of going in the army, but it's a risk you have to take if you want to do it that badly. Right then, we're going to start with the mandatory form, right, that you fill out. It's called an army interest form, OK? It's more or less it now. I was just lost in that, but I've learned to deal with it, and it's just made me grow up. Sorted my life out. Frankie is now back at college for his final year. He was offered the club job permanently, but reluctantly, he had to give it up when the late hours impacted on his studies. He still intends to go to university. I buy houses, you know, buy cars, you know. I want to be able to 
you know, just live a comfortable lifestyle. Like, I want to be able to not be the same as everyone else. And... Deep water, stay under, see it rolling over your head. Craig's waiting to hear when he'll be called up to the infantry. He's still sofa surfing and surviving on benefits. I'll just stay around doing what I'm doing anyway. I'll just end up being doing something bad eventually and then I'll end up getting arrested or something. I don't want that. After his three week job, Wes has had to go back onto JSA. He still sees his son and he's looking for a permanent job. I wouldn't mind getting into academies and coaching academies because I know I've got the level two that I've got. I know I can do that, so that's what I'm going to push for. Deep water, a little deeper than you do. Feel it going over the edge and just go with it until it's all good, yeah.